hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hid. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. Let us pray. Almighty God, who through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, overcame death and opened to us the gate of everlasting life, grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of the Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the lessons. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will make for all peoples a feast of rich food, a feast of well-aged wines, of rich food filled with marrow, of well-aged wine strained clear. And he will destroy on this mountain the shroud that is cast over all peoples, the sheet that is spread over all nations. He will swallow up death forever. Then the Lord God will wipe away the tears from all faces and the disgrace of his people he will take away from all the earth. For the Lord has spoken. It will be said on that day, lo, this is our God. We, are, we have waited for him so that he might save us. This is the Lord for whom we have waited. Let us be glad and rejoice in his salvation. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people.
This is the day of the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. This is the day of the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. Give thanks to the Lord, for he is good. His mercy endures forever. Let Israel now proclaim, His mercy endures forever. The Lord is my strength and my song, and He has become my salvation. There is a sound of exultation and victory in the tents of the righteous. This is the day of the Lord, we rejoice and are glad. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. The right hand of the Lord is exalted. The right hand of the Lord has triumphed. I shall not die but live and declare the works of the Lord. The Lord has punished me sorely, but he did not hand me over to death. Open for me the gates of righteousness. I will enter them. I will offer thanks to the Lord. This is the day is the gate of the Lord. He who is righteous may enter. I will give thanks to you, for you answered me and have become my salvation. The same stone which the builders rejected has become the chief cornerstone. This is the Lord's doing, and it is marvelous in our eyes. On this day the Lord has acted. We will rejoice and be glad in it. This is the day of the Lord. We rejoice and are glad. A reading from the first letter to the Corinthians. I would remind you, brothers and sisters, of the good news that I proclaim to you, which you in turn received, in which also you stand through which also you are being saved. If you hold firm to the message that I proclaim to you, unless you have come to believe in vain, for I handed on to you as of first importance what I, in turn, had received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures, and that he appeared to Cephas, and then to the twelve, then he appeared to more than 500 brothers and sisters at one time, most of whom are still alive, though some have died. Then he appeared to James, then to all the apostles. Last of all, as to one untimely born, he appeared also to me. 
for I am the least of the apostles, unfit to be called an apostle, because I persecuted the church of God. But by the grace of God, I am what I am, and this grace towards me has not been in vain. On the contrary, I worked harder than any of them, though it was not I, but the grace of God that is in with me. Whether, there is, whether it was I or they, so we proclaim, and so you have come to believe. Hear what the Spirit is saying to God's people. Christ according to Mark. Glory to you, Lord Christ. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they might go and anoint him. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, Do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter that he is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him, just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Usually I have to repeat that because people don't get it, but you guys are really good at it. During Holy Week, of all the scripture readings we read, I enjoy listening most to the lovely creation story from Genesis, 
which was read last night so beautifully by Ray. Because life began in a garden and Jesus was raised in a garden. We've come to face some difficulty in the 21st century, among many difficulties, of talking about creation. Gardening, yes, but the big picture garden of God's whole earth and every living creature as intended and connected. Well, we've come to struggle with this a bit. We can't seem to talk about the beauty of the earth without a little disagreement and conflict cropping up around hot topics like global warming or climate change. But I want us to remember this day, above all days, that life began in a garden and Jesus was resurrected in a garden. There are times when we walk into our own gardens and delight in the beauty and bounty of the flowers and vegetables we plant and tend there. And there are times when gardens challenge and disappoint us. Many times the Easter story has been told as a simple reunion between Jesus and Mary in the garden. It's as if he, you know, woke up and stretched and waited for her to get there after the sun rose. And then when Mary recognized him, it was just, you know, old home week, as we used to say back south. But that's not how, quite how it goes in Mark's version. When Mary and these other women came to that particular garden that particular morning, they were scared. I imagine they were worried about, well, they say they were worried about getting that large stone moved, rolled away from the tomb. They probably didn't expect to even have access to the tomb. They must have been overwhelmed to find it empty. Empty. When we try our best to imagine what that must have felt like, we can empathize with their fear because we too have experienced fear. Some of us have been in terrifying situations, perhaps even worse than theirs, like war zones and riots and times when we felt our very lives threatened. Others of us can empathize with the, just the simple fear of the unknown, not knowing where the body of Jesus had been moved, not knowing who or what this angel, angel character is. This angel who made the first announcement of the resurrection. And not knowing what on earth he was talking about when he said that Jesus was on his way to Galilee, that's 80 miles away. So they ran in terror. They ran. And at first I imagine they were running for fear of their lives, running away, just running scared. But they must have collected themselves at some point and joined Peter and the others and caught their breath and told the message, the tomb was empty, we must go to Galilee. And I imagine they had lots of time on that journey, that 80 mile walk to Galilee to sort of sort things out, to come to believe, to let go of the fear. But it is the emptiness of the tomb itself that is of interest as well. We can relate to emptiness. We often come here with a sense of emptiness in our lives. We come to see Jesus. We come to hear the story. We hope to fill our own emptiness with his love. Because the emptiness in our hearts can be a tomb of sorts itself. If we let our loneliness or our anger or our fear hold us back, we can't quite face that kind of emptiness. We want to run. But what sort of running are we doing if we're running from our emptiness? What sort of running are we doing if we are avoiding the great mystery of the garden? What sort of running should we do instead? Run to tell the good news. Run to ease our fear and worry. Run all the way to Galilee if it takes that much running to sort it out. But we are not meant to run away. We are meant to run with joy to meet our Lord. 
There's a cherry blossom festival in, uh, in the spring this time of year in Macon, Georgia, where I used to live. When Kate and I lived there, she was pretty young then, and we enjoyed this two-week festival, you know, where they cut off the streets and had bands and vendors and all that music and hot air balloons and all that stuff that goes with festivals. It was started by a man named William Fickling, who was a realtor in Macon about 50, 60 years ago. And Mr. Fickling visited Washington, D.C. in his youth, and he was so taken by the cherry trees there that he decided to start a program in his hometown of Macon, Georgia. Let's grow some cherry trees. And it worked. Within about 10 years, nearly every yard in town had at least one cherry tree in it. And today, those cherry blossoms, when they're in full bloom, will take your breath away. So they have a festival. And Mr. Fickling is a local hero down there. School children in Macon, well, throughout Georgia, um, have to take a test on their state's history in middle school, and they start studying all about the history of Georgia in elementary school. Well, in Macon, they also grill their children to know this story of how the Cherry Blossom Festival had been started and all about Mr. Fickling. A few years ago, a couple I knew attended an Easter Sunday service in Macon. Now, yeah, they were a busy young couple, and they'd been a bit slack on their church attendance that year. And in fact, on their way to church that Easter Sunday, they realized they hadn't been there since Christmas. It just sort of slipped up on them. They were so busy or tired on Sunday mornings. Or I'm sure they had the best intentions for attending more regularly, but whatever the reason, this young couple was sort of behind in their Christian homework. Now, these folks were Baptists, so you understand the pressure they must have suddenly faced. They, they became aware that their child in the back seat, now about seven years old, might actually embarrass them in Sunday school that morning because of his lack of biblical knowledge. So they thought, well, let's prep him real quick. They turned to their son in the back seat, and the mom said, son, you do know what Easter's all about, right? And the little boy quickly responded, well, sure, Mom. That's when Mr. Fickling rose from the dead. <laughs> sometimes the story gets mixed up. And sometimes the beauty of God's creation gets lost in that mix. We try to follow Jesus, to be the church, to raise our children, to follow too. But often we end up on our knees in the mud, despairing over a lost crop of squash or a tomato blight or even dead cherry trees. But God never stops calling us to the garden where we can find rest and renewal. And if we open our eyes wide enough in the dawning hours of that first light, the resurrected sun will be waiting for us always in the beautiful garden of life. Theologian Norman Wurzba describes God as a gardener with, he says, knees on the ground and hands in the dirt. And by this he means that God did not just make the world in some distant and singular act of creation and then you know, walk away. God's hand continues to be at work in the world and around us. All of creation continues to be sustained by God's loving attention and care. God continually tends to the world in the way that a good gardener continually tends her land, always watering, always weeding, and digging, and planting, and fertilizing, and harvesting. Another theologian, my, my friend Pamela Dolan, says, Thinking about God as a gardener includes understanding that God's care for creation includes, but it's not limited to, us, human beings. We are part of an intricate web of life and our very existence is completely dependent on the health and vitality of the rest of the planet. If God loves us and cares for us, 
God must also love and care for plants and animals, for sky and oceans, and even perhaps especially for dirt. She goes on to say that since Christians believe that Jesus came into the world to offer us reconciliation with God and the possibility of new and abundant life, it makes sense that the resurrected Jesus would appear in a garden as a gardener. And so my friends, as we live into the joy of this Easter morning, let's remember that we live together in a garden, one big beautiful garden, this fragile earth, our island home. And we should join our efforts to tend the land. We are meant to return the love of God by tending what he has planted in our love for each other. And the best way to respond is to just accept the gift of the creator who loves us so much to have given us a redeemer who died for us and rose again. So go from here knowing you are loved. Run, tell the good news knowing you are filled because the tomb was empty. Death has been vanquished. Seek the Savior in the garden. Seek the Holy Spirit among us when we are kind to one another. And know that you will always find what you're looking for among the abundance of God's love. Alleluia, the Lord is risen. The Lord is risen indeed. Alleluia. Amen. The prayers of the people. Let us pray for the church and for the world. Grant, Almighty God, that all who confess your name may be united in your truth, live together in your love, and reveal your glory in the world. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
guide the people of this land and of all the nations in the ways of justice and peace, that we may honor one another and serve the common good. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Give us all a reverence for the earth as your own creation, that we may use its resources rightly in the service of others and to your honor and glory. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Bless all whose lives are closely linked to ours and grant that we may serve Christ in them and love one another as he loves us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Comfort and heal all those who suffer in body, mind, or spirit, especially those who are on our, on our prayer list. Give them courage and hope in their troubles and bring them the joy of your salvation. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We commend to your mercy all who have died, that your will for them may be fulfilled, and we pray that we may share with all your saints in your eternal kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty and eternal God, ruler of all things in heaven and earth, mercifully accept the prayers of your people and strengthen us to do your will through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us greet each other in the name of the Lord. Good morning, good morning. Happy Easter. Thought I was gonna have to wait a little longer for Ray to do the room. <laughs> uh, I draw your attention to the announcements in the, I think it's blue leaflet for you, this service, isn't it? It was green today, but same announcements. Lots of stuff going on here at Church of the Nativity. Please join us for our during the week small groups that go on. We welcome all our guests and friends today. I wanna lift up a, a couple of things. Um, I will be uh, here during the week this week, so we will have Eucharist on Wednesday and Bible study on Thursday. Um, I'm not leaving actually till next week, but I'm not going to be here next Sunday. And what's going to happen is we're going to do this entirely new thing that Bishop Gretchen's getting a whole lot of um, uh, heat about from the other bishops. She has uh, allowed and trained some of our lay people to provide... Uh, Holy Communion from the Reserve Sacrament. Um, uh, so that's what's going to happen next week. Pete Ruffle has been through an extensive training on that. He will talk about it at an adult forum next week if you want to come a little early and hear from him how did this come to be. Um, um, but if you show up, it'll be kind of normal church, really. Um, but Pete will stand in a different place and a couple of different things will be said, but it should feel pretty normal. 
Um, the following week we'll have morning prayer and then I'll be back after that. I'll be back in the office on the 19th. But Pete will be uh, serving you reserved sacrament from what I blessed today. So, um, I, uh, Happy birthday, Ray. Do you want to get a blessing? Yes. Let's do a blessing for Ray. <laughs> this is on page 830 in that red book in the pew. It's, a, it's our prayer book. We're going to say it together. Page 830. I'm going to make them all pray for you. (laughs) (laughs) Let us pray. O God, our times are in your hands. Look with favor, we pray, on your servant Ray as he begins another year. Grant that he may grow in wisdom and grace and strengthen his trust in your goodness all the days of his life. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Happy birthday. He just told me he's one day out of, oh, I won't get them. He'll be 81 tomorrow. Um, I, I want to give uh, thanks for what I've decided to call Bob's Wicks Brass Band. Uh, you could probably come up with a better name, guys, but they're only together for this one. Thank you so much for coming. Sarah can tell you, I think, their names. We're so glad to have you with us today. You sound amazing. Yes, we are. We're so happy to have you. Bob and Anna Wicks are with us, and Ben and Henry and Alexis. So, say Thank you. Time. Thank you. <laughs> Becky Clark, can you kind of step down the aisle and give us a wave? It's our vestry person of the day. Becky's an eight o'clocker, so not all, all of you know her, so make an effort. She will stand in the receiving line. Make an effort to meet Becky, who is an eight o'clocker who's newly on our vestry. Any other announcements? Walk in love as Christ loved us and gave himself for us, an offering and sacrifice to God.
be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord. It is right to give God thanks and praise. It is right and a good and joyful thing always and everywhere to give thanks to you, Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. But chiefly are we bound to praise you for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the true Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and has taken away the sin of the world. By his death he has destroyed death, and by his rising to life again he has won for us everlasting life. Therefore, we praise you, joining our voices with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven who forever sing this hymn to proclaim the glory of your name. For yourself. And when we have fallen into sin and become subject to evil and death, you, in your mercy, sent Jesus Christ, your only and eternal Son, to share our human nature, to live and die as one of us, to reconcile us to you, the God and Father of all. He stretched out his arms upon the cross and offered himself in obedience to your will, a perfect sacrifice for the whole world. On the night he was handed over to suffering and death, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread. And when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, we proclaim the mystery of faith. Christ has died. Christ has risen. Christ will come again. We celebrate the memorial of our redemption, O Father, in this sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. Recalling his death, resurrection, and ascension, we offer you these gifts. Sanctify them by your Holy Spirit to be for your people the body and blood of your Son, the holy food and drink of new and unending life in him. Sanctify us also that we may faithfully receive this holy sacrament and serve you in unity, constancy, and peace. And at the last day, bring us with all your saints into the joy of your eternal kingdom. All this we ask through your Son, Jesus Christ, by him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. Amen. Amen. And now, as our Savior Christ has taught us, we are bold to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever.
gifts of God for the people of God. Take them in remembrance that Christ died for you and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving.
let us pray. Please, O God, Heavenly Father, you have graciously accepted us as living members of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. And you have fed us with spiritual food and the sacrament of his body and blood. Seek us now in the world of peace and strength and courage to love and serve you with gladness and singleness of heart through Christ our Lord. Amen. May Almighty God, who has redeemed us and made us his children through the resurrection of his Son, our Lord, bestow upon you the riches of his blessing. Amen. May God, who through the water of baptism has raised us from sin into newness of life, make you holy and worthy to be united with Christ forever. Amen. May God, who has brought us out of bondage to sin into true and lasting freedom in the Redeemer, bring you to your eternal inheritance. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be upon you and remain with you forever. Amen. Amen.